Hey everybody and welcome back. We just ended part two of our how-to video on finding confidence intervals, margins of errors, and sampling distributions. And I'm gonna move on to our next examples. In our next example, our goal is to find the smallest possible sample size needed to get a given margin of error. The smallest sample we need to get a specific margin of error. And if you think about this, the bigger your sample is, the smaller that your mistake might be. So if I wanna figure out whether people prefer vanilla or chocolate ice cream, and I only ask one person, a tiny little sample, my margin of error is gonna be pretty huge. That one person does not represent the population very well at all. But if I ask 10,000 people what they prefer, that sample size is big and is going to represent my population much better and is going to give me a much lower margin of error. Therefore, a question that I might wonder is, what's the smallest sample size that I need to give me the margin of error that I want? So let's see how to do that. Suppose you wanna estimate the mean distance between two molecules in an elephant. You may not give this a lot of thought, but as it turns out, elephants contain a lot of molecules. So we are wanna see what's an estimate of the mean distance between any two molecules in an elephant. Now, I want a margin of error of 0.01 micrometers. So I don't wanna be particularly wrong. I wanna be maybe my upper bound is off by 0.01, my lower bound is off by 0.01. Now in the past, studies have suggested that the population standard deviation for the distance between molecules in an elephant is 0.16 micrometers. All right, so I wanna estimate the minimum sample size that I need to, to collect from elephants in order to estimate the population mean with the given accuracy that I would like. So how do I do that? What's the formula to figure out the smallest sample size needed to get a certain margin of error? Well, here's the formula. Again, it's a nice estimate of the formula. We're using a two here. And the sample size n that I'm gonna need to give me a 95% confidence interval with a margin of error of 0.01 is the following. My sample size is equal to two times sigma. Remember, sigma is my standard deviation for the problem, divided by my E or my margin of error, and then that whole thing is gonna be squared. So in this particular problem, what am I given? Well, my sigma value given to me was 0.16, if you remember from the problem. And let's back up so we can see that. Remember, my standard deviation from the problem is 0.16, so that was given to me. So that's my sigma, or my standard deviation. Here's the two from the formula. I wanna divide by the margin of error that I'm looking to get. I want a margin of error of 0.01. That was given in the problem as well. I'm gonna multiply these two together and divide by 0.01. When I do that, I'm gonna get 32, which I'm then gonna square to get my value of n, which in this case is 1,024. So I need to take a sample of 1,024 in order to get that margin of error of 0.01 that I want with a 95% confidence interval. So that's an example of how to find the smallest sample size needed for a particular margin of error. And remember that the problem also gave us the standard deviation. All right, let's see another example. In this example, we wanna find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation given a data set. So this is a little bit different because so far we've been given this information, but in this case, we're just given a set of data and we're looking to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now, as you can imagine, there are easier ways to do this than by hand. You can type all these values into Excel and you can very quickly get the sample mean and sample standard deviation, 
or you can type them into StatCrunch or whatever other software package you want to use. However, I'm also going to show you how to do this by hand. So the first step is, what is the size of our sample here? All right, well, our sample size n is 14 here. Why? Because we have exactly 14 values. Next, what is the mean for this sample? How do we get the mean or the average? Well, we take all of these 14 numbers and we add them up together and we divide them by 14. And when we do that, we get 242.7. So we add them all together and divide by 14. That's how we get the mean. Now the next question is, how do we find the sample standard deviation? That maybe is not quite so easy and takes a little bit longer by hand. There's a formula for sample standard deviation, and this is it right here. First in this formula, and you have to do this formula step by step, you take each value in your sample, which we're going to call x. So x represents each value in this sample. Then we're going to subtract from x the sample mean that we just calculated. Remember, we just said that our sample mean was 242.7. So from every single value, we're going to subtract the sample mean. Then we're going to take that difference and we're going to square it. After we square the difference, we're going to add them all together. That's what this sum means. Finally, after adding them all together, we're going to divide them by n minus 1 and then take the square root. When we do each of these steps, we get a sample standard deviation of 115.6. If you do this in Excel, the formula is the following. You can also do this in StatCrunch. But here's how you do it by hand. Again, remember, this is our data set, and each of these values is one of our x's. Also remember that our sample mean is 242.7. So I'm going to use kind of a long hand, and I'll show you here on this slide each step. Here's each one of the values from our data set. These are all of our x's. Here's the sample mean over and over and over and over again. Here's where I take the mean and subtract it from x. So 92 minus the mean is negative 150.7. 356 minus the mean is 113.3, and so on. In other words, I took every single value in the data set and subtracted the mean just from that value. And that's what's here in this column. Then I'm going to take this value, x minus the mean, for every one of these, and I want to square it. That's the next thing the formula tells us to do. So I square this one, and then I square this one, and then I square this one, and then I square this one, and so on. So each one of these values is now the square of each one of these. After I square all of these differences, finally I add them all together, and that's where this number comes from down here. When I add every one of these numbers together, I get the sum. It's called the sum of the squares. I get all the sums of the squares. Then I take this value and divide it by n minus 1 to get this number, and finally I take the square root to get, again, the same exact answer that Excel will give you. So this is each step in that formula. If you're wondering how that formula works, you take each value of x, subtract the mean from it, take each difference and square it, then take all of the difference squared and add them together, divide that by n minus 1, and then finally take the square root of that value. That is what this formula actually tells us to do. It says subtract the mean from all the values of x, square each one of them, sum them all together, then divide that sum by n minus 1, and then finally take the square root. And when you do, that's the value that you get. Again, this is the formula in Excel, assuming your data set is in column A1 through A14. All right. That ends our overview. Thank you so much for joining me.